I do have your test from yesterday graded. I don't think they're in on now yet. Darn it, poor third period. You're always the last in the stack to get graded. You did get graded. I didn't think I cracked your opinion. I have, still haven't graded your test from Friday. I pray I don't fall asleep too early and get that graded tonight. Worst comes to worst, you'll know that before the end of the weekend. I would like to put it in your hands so nobody is not going to grade me with a present next week. They don't feel the need to come back and see me. I hope to answer all the questions they need. Say what now? Yes, you are. At the end of class, I'm going to show you all that. Good question. You have a point six. Okay, so we need to fix some things. There are some things that got to go. In fact, there are some problems we've already worked that we're now going to cross off. Because I got told which problems are not for, for sure not on the exam, so let's get rid of them. Go to number 45. You didn't like 45 anyway. It was a word problem. It wasn't hard, but it was a word problem. Aren't you excited to have 45 now out? Not only is 45 out, but we also have to go to 59. It's one of the matrices ones we recently worked. So it is kind of a sad day that they got rid of it. If only I could flip today. Okay, we're going to get rid of 59 and 60. Now, do you still need to know how to multiply matrices? Yes. Do you need to understand that there are some matrices that cannot be multiplied and why? Absolutely. But those two specific problems will not have similar friends on the semester exam. In fact, on the same page, we're also going to cross off number 62. Now, you and I corrected it the other day, and we changed the wording to discriminant. But as discussed, if it says evaluate diagonals, that would not make the semester exam. So that's what we're going to go ahead and just call it a day on that one. Get rid of it. Yeah, it's going to be a while. <laughs> okay, is everyone good till here? Then let's go in reverse order. Go to the very last page, very last problem, 124. So originally, we thought we might, I mean, we had, we had high hopes. And it's fine that we didn't read them. We're still going to end up being just fine out of the teacher. Right? We thought somehow we were going to finish all of Chapter 5. So there are a lot of questions at the end that we, it's material we haven't reached yet. So 120 to 124, bye-bye. The whole last page, bye-bye. And if we're being completely honest, the page before that on the other side... 114 to 119, goodbye. And so, if you're one of those people who just can't stand having that extra page of nothing, if you wanted to tear off the last page of the packet and throw it away, I would understand. And I would say tear off the page before that, but don't. Because there's one problem we're going to work on the page before that. Okay, so we're not doing 114 to 124. They're out. They're on good till here. Okay, let's go to 113. Lo and behold, that is the one problem we are going to work. So let's go ahead and get it out of the way. They want us to factor m squared plus 9m plus 14. 113. Let's work it really fast. It's B, one get a point. M plus 7, M plus 2, 7 plus 9 is 2, 7 times 2 is 14, the answer is B. Now, while we did work 113, we are not working 112, 111, 110, or 19. Goodbye, everybody else on that page except 113. Ooh. Not only are we saying goodbye to 109, 110, 111, 112, we're going to say goodbye to a couple more. So some pages for that. We don't want 8, 7, or 6. 106, 107, 108, goodbye. Like I said, if it wasn't for 113, I would tell you to rip the next last page off the study guide as well. But darn you, 113. 
or what is it? We did sneak one factor one in there, so you need that one. We're not doing 106. We're not doing 105, 104, 103, 102, 101. And we're almost done crossing things off, so don't suddenly get excited and think I'm just going to cross all the way off to 75 tonight. But we do have a couple more. We also don't want 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, 95. Literally the last problem we're going to work, besides 113, that's the one outlier. The last problem besides that is 94. So really, well, we can tear this page off. really you could. Really, we're stopping after 194, except for number 113. But I mean, Mason knows how to factor theoretically. Maybe he doesn't really want to keep the page at 113. I don't really care. So if you had run away the last three ASNs, yeah, I won't be completely offended. I will be if you practice on my floor, but I won't be completely offended. So really today, all I'm going to do is 75 to 94. So it's not as bad as you thought. We can totally do that. Let's go to 75. Some of these are going to be really fast. 75, we're going to start off a little slow on it. 75 involves complex numbers. You have to remember something about complex numbers. So I know the answer on 75. Yes, if you said, I heard it from two groups. If you said B, circle, I don't know, plus one on the number show. Now, I... We talked about forever was the square root of negative one. I had a trick where I remembered it was I one I one and the two middles were negative. I know my teacher taught me to remember that I to the fourth was one. So for this problem, I would say I to the fourth raised to the eight because four times eight is thirty-two. I know I to the fourth is one, so really I have one to the eight, so I really just have one. Hence why the answer is B. However, Mr. Moore next door doesn't like using I to the fourth. He uses I squared. So he would have said I squared to the 16th because that's also 32. He knows I squared is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 16. He would still get positive 1. And while I love my way and I think thinking in fours is easiest, they did tell you to begin with I squared was negative 1. So if you forgot, his way would get you there. Okay, we're using context clues. We're obviously on complex number problems. Look at 76. What two answer choices should I go ahead and just cross off? It's not going to be this or this. Say it again? Yes. Get a point. It's not going to be A or B. We don't have I's. We're in the complex section. Shouldn't our answer have an I in it? Okay, so we had 5x squared plus 100 equal to 0. What's my first step? We can do that. Or if you wanted to factor out the 5, you'll still end up with the same answer. So if I divide by 5, I'll have x squared equals negative 20. So I have x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 20. I can't leave it like that, can I? The answer is C, and you can get a point for that. So it's plus or minus the square root of 20i, because so that's negative 1 under the radical. And then 20 is something we can break down. We realize that's 4 times 5. Hey, I know the square root of 4, so it's 2 square root of 5i. So the answer is C. Any questions on 76? What are we supposed to use on 77? Uh, 
Okay, if we just, what's it called when we're fancy distributing like that? Foiling. Okay, two, get your point. So first five, outer plus 15i, inner plus 2i, last plus 6i squared. Not 15, thank you. Yes, ma'am, and you can have a point. That leads me to yesterday's test. There was a FOIL problem on yesterday's test, and I had first, some people who did not do the O and the I. They only did first and last. No outer inner. I don't know why. So they got Y squared minus 70. They forgot about the stuff in the middle. I was curious. Okay, if I combine my like terms, I've got 5 plus 17I plus 6I squared. But I squared is what? Get another point. So really I have negative 6. So hence why I have negative 1 plus 17i, which is y raised to the answer is c. I knew that 6 times negative 1, hence it's negative 6. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So negative 1 plus 17i c. Okay, so we like foiling. Yeah, it's complex numbers, but we can foil. Most of us have got it. I, don't, I mean, some of us just had a blind moment. We're allowed. Why are we going to 78? Why are we not going to foil on number 78? Okay, then how come on our test yesterday I had quite a few pieces? Any time, hold on one second. Um, how come we had quite a few people any time? It didn't matter if there was a minus sign or what in the middle. They still foiled. They didn't care. If there's a plus sign or a minus sign in between, that's what you're supposed to do. Foiling is more multiplying. If there's a sign in between, we're not multiplying. Okay, so it's 15 minus 13i minus negative 1 plus 17i. Travis said the answer is A and he can get a point. 15 Minus that negative 1 does end up being 16. Negative 13 minus 17 does end up being negative 30i. So you get correct. The answer is A. Now, if you made an easy sign error, you knew it was negative 17, it was negative 13, but for some reason you want to make that a positive 30. That was an answer choice. Um, you ignored the subtraction sign the second time, and you said negative 13 plus 17, and got negative 4, or got 4, hence the second answer choice. I don't know how on earth you would have guessed D. Don't guess D. 79, I will give you two points, although first and second period have failed to come up with the correct answer. If you'll tell me what we're supposed to, what did you say? Landon, did you say an answer? D. You said D? He yeah. said D. It is D. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, but humor me anyway. You can have one point for that. You can still have two points if you know these Come words. On, Come on, <laughs> we have Come on. to multiply the top and the bottom. No, the discriminants with matrices. It does start with a C. So... We have rules, there couldn't be a complex number in the denominator, so we're going to multiply. Two points to two. First period to not let me down today. I swear I said those words at some point in life. We multiply by the complex conjugate. Now, do you have to remember that vocab term in order to know how to do this problem? Absolutely not. I was just curious if someone did. All it means is we multiply by two plus three. You take the bottom and do the opposite sign. So it was 2 minus 3i, so we're going to multiply by 2 plus 3i. Now this problem does stink. We end up having to foil twice. We're going to have to foil in the numerator and foil in the denominator. So we have 1 plus 2i, 2 plus 3i, 2 minus 3i, 2 plus 3i. Okay, I plus 3 i now the denominator is going to work out beautifully on purpose. We made it so. We wanted to get rid of any i's in the denominator. So that's why we're multiplying by the conjugate. First is 4. Outer plus 6i. Inner minus 6i. Last 
minus 9i squared. The positive 6i, the negative 6i, they cancel out. I really have 4 plus 9 because negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9. So I end up with just a 13 in the denominator. Now this is where, if this is multiple choice, you could stop. The only answer choice with a 13 in the denominator was D. But since this is math class and it wouldn't hurt you to make sure you understand how I got the rest of the answer, I'll show you the top. First is 2, outer is 3i. Inner is 4i, last is 6i squared. So I really have 2 plus 7i minus 6, because again, i squared is negative 1. I don't need to write in that color anymore. Number 2. So I really have negative 4 plus 7i. If I break that into two separate fractions, suddenly I have answer choice D. But I could have just stopped when I knew the 13 was in the denominator. The only answer choice that matched that was D. So I could have stopped there. No one's checking your work. You can tell me the answer and then I'm going to make you sad. Okay, go ahead, tell me. It actually is A. Uh, but here's what's going to disappoint Brady. Our last problem that we officially get to cross off, number 80. We're not going to do that word problem. Okay. Goodbye, 80. We're going to 81. 81 is another conjugate problem. No, it was A. It was. 81, you said what, ma'am? Yes, you get a point. Okay, it was 4 minus 2i over 7 plus 3i. If I multiply the top and the bottom by that conjugate, so 7 minus 3i, 7 minus 3i. Go ahead and put them in parentheses so I can foil it out. I don't have a lot of room. Can't show too much work. In the denominator, I would have 49 minus 21i plus 21i, minus 9i squared. So I end up just having in the denominator 49 plus 9. So I end up with just a 58 in the denominator. And then I'm already mad because none of the answer choices had a 58 in the denominator. Yes, we're going to have to do the numerator this time and simplify. You're going to have a point and then a point five. So 28 for the first, negative 12i for the outer, negative 14i for the inner, last 6i squared. So I really have 28 minus 26i minus 6. So I have 22 minus 26i. And then what is everybody divisible by? You get a point. So that's how I got 11 minus 13i over 29. Hence why the answer choice is A. And then someone tell me something curious about the answer choices. Well, that's true, but we're in complex in the world, so they, all have the same they do all have the same denominator. You almost got it. They all are They're all subtraction. Yeah, you couldn't really guess on this one. There's are they all they do all have the 11 over 29 or 13 over 20. Yes, they have. There's a problem. There's a problem with one of the answer choices. Yes, to get another point. Notice A and D are exactly the same. I was supposed to, at the beginning of this problem, tell you to add a plus sign on D. A and D were exactly the same. The answer is A, but it's okay if you had circled D until I changed it, because they were the same answer. Goodness gracious. Ugh. And that, the good news is, that's the end of the complex number problem. And then the bad news is, the next couple are quadratics, which you normally are fine with, except they tricked you on number 82, 
They ask about a specific step when you complete this layer. So you have to complete this layer. You can't quadratic formula it, you can't graph it. You're going to literally have to complete the square in order to figure out the answer. And I am out of room. I'm going to move it down here. Get a point? Yes. Okay, so I know I'm supposed to complete the square. When you complete the square, what do you do? Okay, and Abigail's going to have another point. Negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9. Negative 9 squared is 81. So what do I end up with on the right side? Yes, Dre and another point. And hence why Dre didn't say A. Because A had positive 25 and we have a negative 25. So don't pick A. If we took the square root of both sides, wouldn't we have X minus 9 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 25? Don't I know that's plus or minus 5i? Hence why the answer choice is C. Wasn't I supposed to know that? 25 is perfect square. And then I had that negative sign underneath, so I knew it was 5i. So the answer to 82 is C. 83, life gets better. Suddenly we get to use that quadratic formula. What's A, B, and C in the quadratic formula for this problem? Is what? Okay, why is Abigail Grace wrong? Okay, she needs to put everybody on one side. Why do you have to put it in standard form first? Why do you have to put it in standard form first? Yes, if you don't set it equal to zero. If you don't set it equal to zero, how are you going to say this one's A, this one's B, this one's C? You're going to make a mistake. You've got to set it up right. And then, of course, you have to know the quadratic formula. Does anyone know the answer before I spoil it? Yes, ma'am. No, not the formula, just for the answer. If they don't know the formula now, bless their hearts. Yeah, no, you're allowed. Negative, negative 5, plus or minus the square root, b squared, minus 4ac over 2a. So you end up getting 5, plus or minus the square root, 25 minus 8 over 4. Hence 5, plus or minus the square root of 17 over 4. Okay. So we see how we got b. And then I'm a little disappointed in you that no one was a smarty pants like Seth was first period. He knew the answer choice before actually using the quadratic formula. Why did he know the answer before he worked the problem? Okay, so Jessica pointed out an obvious option. So it's not A because A has a negative 5 in front. Why is it not C? Because of 33. And then why is it not D? Yes, and it's not over 4. So, he knew that A and D were similar. So, I mean, B and D were different, similar, and since, hence why it was B. Did you need that, man? I saw one in the back one scratching their head at me. Okay, I'll leave it there. If we were trying to make our life a little faster, there's a piece of the quadratic formula we could have calculated first. What's that piece called before we go to the next page and see the word? And what's it called? No, the determinant is with major C's. Yeah, but you cheated. The determinant. Are you good, ma'am? Okay, let's go to the next one. 84. 84 is D. Ready to get a point. X squared minus 3X plus 1 equals 0. He said negative B plus or minus square root. B squared minus 4AC. 
over to A. Right, so 3 plus, that's a good point, so I knew it wasn't C, so that negative 3 out front, or A. Okay, so I'm going to give Travis another point while you look at my work and tell you that Travis didn't have to do any of this. When you're really on my nerves. Uh, Travis didn't have to do any of this. Travis realized negative B was minus negative 3, hence it had to be a positive 3 in front, so it was either B or D. And then he did the discriminant really quickly in his head and was like, that's why it has to be D. He didn't actually have to use the formula. That's pretty genius. If you weren't that genius, that's too bad because 85 actually says the word discriminant. So you've got to know what that part is. So we need the B squared minus 4AC. What is the answer on 85? You can have a point. So B squared minus 4AC ends up being 9 minus 28, which is negative 19. If we get a negative number, that means we have a negative under that radical. Hence, how we're going to know it's a complex answer. It's complex roots. Very good, 85. 86, the same sort of thing. Does anyone know the answer on 86? C. Yes. Okay, and you can have a point, Dre, but we're going to talk about why I like will feel sorry formation if this were an actual exam question. Thank you, ma'am. Um, B squared minus 4AC. So it's negative 1 squared minus 4, 3 times negative 12. You get 1 plus 144, which is 145. Is that a perfect square? So we're going to have a nice number in the radical. Like if square root of 36 is in the radical, you're happy. I know that. It's it. Is that a pretty number under the radical? No. Hence why that's irrational and we would have to try to break it down. Hence why the answer is D. Has it been a long time since we talked about rational, irrational? Am I probably going to give it to you if you just pick one of the ones that say two answers knowing me? Yes. No. Negative 12, negative 12, positive 12. Yes, you are. You li yes, you literally are. So you want to go ahead and say the answer to 87 then. Don't know the answer to 87 already? Yes, ma'am. You can have a point. Why is this problem harder? Why is this one harder than the last one? You can have another point. I added 3 to both sides. I should have gotten a 13. I subtracted 3x from both sides. So I have x squared minus 3x plus 13 equals 0. b squared minus 4ac. That's going to be negative 3 squared minus 4ac. So 9 minus 52 which is negative something. Regardless, it's negative, so the answer is A. Okay, so if, you know, I would say it's been a while, but that's a complete lie. You took a test on that on Friday, so goodness gracious. 88, if you miss that, I will cry. Every group get a point. What answer would make me mad? Why would C specifically make me mad? Yes, you're supposed to do the opposite of the X. So it's supposed to be 3, 6. It's supposed to be B. If you wanted to pick C, then I want to go home and cry. We're almost done. 89. 87. A.
89 is, and he's correct. Okay, so 89 is what you just took a test on yesterday. Yay! A to the zero is really one, so I have three B squared times two A to the third B squared all squared. Well, two squared is four, three times two is six, two times two is four. So I have 12 A to the six, B to the two plus four is six. He's right, it is A. 90, Ninety. Oh man. But you all did well on number 10 yesterday. I had most of you had the correct answer, so surely you can do 90. Ooh. You've got to distribute and solve. I would give it to you, but you guessed the like saddest one first, so no. Yeah, someone else. D. <laughs> the answer is D. Can someone prove it? Or do I get to keep this point? I will keep the point. You're right. Let's move on. So let's see. If I distribute, I'll have 2x to the 5th times x to the 4th. That's 2x to the ninth. 2 times 3 is 6. I add my exponents to x to the 7th. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8x to the 5th. That's what happens when I distribute 2x to the 5th. I have to still distribute, yes, I have to have a point. I have to still distribute the negative 5. Negative 5x to the 4th plus 3 plus 1 is 4. Negative 15x to the 5th because 3 plus 2 is 5. And then positive 20x to the 3rd. When I combine my like terms, I'm still going to have 2x to the 9th. But the 7th I can put together if only I hadn't made a mistake. <coughs> Seven. Yay. Six minus five is one. Negative eight minus fifteen. Negative twenty three x to the fifth plus a twenty x to the third. It doesn't take long, it just requires a little patience. One lose point. Okay. DJ said ninety one is A and technically is correct. If you saw one like 91 on the test, what would I want you to ask me? Two, get a point. Can't read those doggone exponents. It's too tiny. you got to ask. 3y squared z over 15y to the fifth. Three, 3 divided by 15, that ends up being 1 uh, fifth, so it's 5 in the denominator. There's still a z in the numerator. And it needs to be y to the third in the denominator. Answer choice A, it's really hard to tell what that is. It's supposed to be a 5y to the third. It's really hard to it tell. It's like 5y to the second. It really does. So it's very hard to tell if there's one like that on the exam. Ooh, Please, awesome. for the love, ask. 92, if you FOIL, I'm mad. You weren't supposed to FOIL. You're just supposed to add like terms. 92 is? B. No, it's not, it's not B. What answer? Four and five get a point. Okay, so seven x to the third doesn't have a friend. So seven x to the third. Don't know why you were guessing B. I know what you did. You tried to foil anyway, even though not to. It's okay. Negative two plus x is negative x squared. Negative x. Three minus five is negative two. Yep, you're right. It's D. Ninety-three is D two. You can have a point. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. Negative 7 minus negative 4 is negative 3a squared. A plus 8. Oh my goodness. 94 is D. D. And I would say everybody get a point, but one is still distracted. So I mean, I'll give everybody give a point anyway, even though one is in a world of their own. It is D. My goodness, that's right. You can't do it.
Okay. So we're done. Don't put it away. We are not turning it in. Oh, when I call you to show you your test from yesterday, bring me your study guide. I'm going to flip through it then. I cannot deal with me keeping any more papers in my life. I think I will go into a crisis. Grading. 